Hi Booktube, it's Janet and today I'm here with my very belated next instalment of the Disney Princesses Furry Tale Retelling Project that I've been doing as Buddy Reads with Eleanor from Eleanor Reads Books and today I'm going to talk to you about Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. Um, I've put these two together because it will become quite clear as I go on because one of them turned out to be a bit of a disappointment and so um, it wasn't enough to make a video all on its own. So I'll start with Cinderella and I read Cinderella from this beautiful, um, I think this is a Knickerbocker Classics version and this is um, a really sort of like, it's sort of like a cloth bound hardback and it actually comes in a, a box itself and this book is beautiful. Um, I'll just show you, so this is sort of Cinderella inside but then as you go through you get beautiful little illustrations and some beautiful um, colour glossy drawings as you go through it as well so thoroughly recommend this book if you want to read some beautiful uh, Grimm's fairy tales it I don't think it was that much money either I think it was really reasonably priced um, so I read the original Cinderella from this book and there weren't a lot of surprises in it, it was pretty much as the story is that we, we know today. The only difference is, is as with all fairy tales in their original forms they can be a little bit more grisly than what we're used to and certainly when we get to the ugly sisters trying on the shoe, she, they, instead of trying to cram the foot in they actually chop bits of the foot off to make it fit. So yeah, if ever there was some desperation, that was it. What we also do is we read the original and then we've been reading three retellings and watching a film adaptation. So the film that we watched for Cinderella was Ella Enchanted starring Anne Hathaway. And I thought I'd seen this before, but as I watched it, I hadn't. And I just thought, oh my goodness, where have you been all my life? I absolutely loved it. Anne Hathaway is absolutely brilliant in it. And she's feisty. And she has a, a when she's born, she has a spell put on her by one of the fairy godmothers that she has to be obedient. And it doesn't lead to the best sort of uh, results as you go through. But it's just an absolute romp. If you've not seen it, I thoroughly recommend it. Books that we chose to read were Ash by Melinda Lowe. And I have to say, this one for me, I started reading it and I just could not get along with it. I just found it really ploddy. I didn't like the writing style. Um, it just really wasn't making me want to pick it up. So I DNF'd that one. I also DNF the other one, one of the other ones that we picked, Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister, and that's by Gregory Maguire. And again, it sounded like it was going to be so good to look at the, the Cinderella story through the eyes of one of the ugly stepsisters. But I just, again, the writing was bizarre. It just seemed to be very choppy and changey and didn't make sense and didn't flow. And again, I just could not get along with it. I think Eleanor also DNF'd this book. Um, just wasn't enjoying it. Didn't make me want to pick it up. So I DNF'd that one as well. So that, that, that's probably why Cinderella turned out to be a little bit of a, a, a quick whiz through because there were two books that were just not good. But thankfully, the third book that we chose was A Kiss at Midnight by Eloisa James, A Regency Tale, and oh my goodness, how much did I enjoy this book. This is an absolute hoot. It's such a fabulous romp. Cinderella, the character in it is called Kate, and she has to go in place of her stepsister, I think it is, or half-sister, um, to... To, to the the prince's sort of ball because he's going to get married to this this Russian princess and um, she gets I think she gets a big spot on her face or something like that so she can't go so Kate has to go in her place and obviously Kate and the prince um, have quite a feisty relationship because Kate is no pushover she just doesn't take any crap off anyone and but the the sparks fly between her and the prince and there are quite a few racy bits in it but it's it's funny the characters are believable there's no twee saccharine bits in it and i raced through it absolutely loved it um 
I've got more of Eloisa James books bought on the back of it because it was just a fantastic read so that completely redeemed the Cinderella part of our project for me it was absolutely brilliant um, I'll just read you the back just to, to whet your appetite but I thoroughly recommend if you want a nice good fun book to read then this is it so it says Miss Kate Daltrey doesn't believe in fairy tales or happily ever after Forced by her stepmother to attend a ball, Kate meets a prince. A clash of wits and wills ensues, but they both know their irresistible attraction will lead nowhere. For Gabriel is promised to another woman, a princess whose hand in marriage will fulfil his ruthless ambitions. Gabriel likes his fiancée, but he doesn't love her, and knows he should be wooing his bride-to-be, not the witty, impoverished beauty he refuses to fawn over him. Godmothers and glass slippers what notwithstanding, this is one fairy tale in which destiny conspires to destroy any chance that Kate and Gabriel might have a happily ever after, unless one kiss at the stroke of midnight changes everything. And it's just great. I love it. So the next fairy tale along that we did was Beauty and the Beast. And we actually read, and it's on my Kindle, um, the original tale, which was written, I think, in the 18th century by Suzanne Gabrielle Villeneuve. I think she was some sort of countess or something like that. And, um, and it's on the Kindle as Madame de Villeneuve's The Story of the Beauty and the Beast. Um, so the original classic French fairy tale. And I have to say that as you're reading it, the first half, it's pretty good. It's just that, you know, the... the the classic Beauty and the Beast story, um, a little bit darker than the Disney version and um, sort of uh, Beauty lives with lots of selfish brothers and sisters and her father loses all his money and so um, he is destitute and you know the usual thing happens where he becomes stranded in the forest and turns up at the beast castle and beauty goes in his place so that's the usual story so that's how it goes but that's just the first half the second half seems to just spend ages just sort of justifying itself and it was sort of like, well, she said that because that and that meant that and that meant that. And it just, oh, and it was just like, you just didn't need any of that. It's a fairy story, just stop halfway. So the second half was just an absolute waste of time and pain. And to be honest, I found it far more confusing for all the explanations than the actual just leave the story be and just let me read the story. Um, so that was the original, quite lengthy actually as well. Um, the film we watched was... Um, so bad it was marvelous it was the 1987 version starring rebecca de mornay and i do recommend you watch it um, it is absolutely terrible but but compelling and watchable at the same time and having read the original compared to the disney versions and maybe some other versions of, of beauty and the beast it's actually quite true to the original 18th century tale um but it's just ghastly but wonderful so I think you can watch it on the internet I think I just downloaded it on the internet you can see it um yeah recommend it but definitely the 1987 Rebecca de Mornay version it is something to see so for Beauty and the Beast retellings we actually read four books so the first one uh, was Of Beast and Beauty by Stacey J and I enjoyed this one um, so it says, in the city of Yuan, the blind princess Isra is raised to be a human sacrifice. Her death will ensure the, her city's vit vitality. In the desert, a mutant breed named Jem fights to save his people, known as the Monstrous, from starvation. Neither dreams that together they can return balance to their worlds. When Jem is captured for trying to steal Yuan's enchanted roses, he becomes a prisoner of the city. Isra enlists his help and soon begins to care for him and to question everything she has been brought up to believe. So basically, um, Yuan is the um, heir to the... the, the thrown in this um, kingdom that's sealed under a glass dome and they're thriving and they're doing well but they're only doing well because the um, the heir to the throne, the woman obviously, um, at some point where things might start going a little bit 
awry where maybe the harvest isn't as good um, that she's got to feed the roses but she feeds it by her own blood as a sacrifice and the people on the outside are called the mutants and they are sort of uh, starving and struggling out in the desert and then this is sort of so it's a really interesting concept um, really liked what what the author did with the story it's very sort of um clever the way she weaved the whole sort of thread of beauty and the beast story into sort of a dystopian sci-fi theme so yeah so i enjoyed that one so that was a beast and beauty the next one i read was cute cruel beauty by rosamund hodge and if you can see that uh, it's like a spiral staircase but within the rose and i think this is the first one in a series so this one is uh, since birth nyx has been betrothed to the evil ruler of her kingdom all because of a reckless bargain her father struck and since birth she has been training to kill him betrayed by her family yet bound to obey nyx rails against her fate Still on her 17th birthday, she abandons everything to marry the all-powerful immortal Igniflex. Her plan, seduce him, disarm him and break the centuries-old curse that put on her people. he put on her people. But Igniflex is not what Nyx expected. The strangely charming lord beguiles her, and his castle, a shifting maze of magical rooms, enthralls her. As Nyx tries to face her tries to free her homeland by uncovering the Igniflex's secrets, she finds herself unwillingly drawn to him. But even if she could bring herself to love her sworn enemy, could she refuse her duty to kill him? So this is a magical sort of tale where um, Nyx lives with her father and sister and her aunt, because her mother is dead. And the people of the town go up to this abandoned castle and if they want something um, like a spell, you know, to sort of change the course of fate or, you know, they have a request, the, the beast grants it. But obviously nothing's ever easy. So there are quite um, cruel consequences. And Nix's fate is her father's payment because of something he asked for um, in the past. But her father is teaching her that uh, again there's some magical sort of spells that can help bring down the beast and she's got to find these different rooms within his castle when she goes there uh, and cast these spells and that should hopefully bring down the beast. It starts to make you question who really is the beast, who's the bad guy, is it the beast or is it the townspeople, is it her father, you don't know. Um, so again quite a, an interesting different take on the original Beauty and the Beast. The next one is Roses by Rose Mannerin and again this is the beginning of a trilogy. I didn't like this one as much as the others. It says she bears no name, her silvery appearance is freakish to the numerous inhabitants of Sago, the cosmopolitan capital of Pevarocco in the western realm. Her, with her mother vanishing at the instance of her birth she is sent to live with the cruel rich Mardane where she is punished daily for something though she knows not what. Tauntingly named Beauty, she flees Sago in a violent uprising that sets out to massacre all magics and journeys to the farthest point of the country. But Beauty cannot hide in the grassy hilllands forever. Before long, the state officials find her and threaten to take her back to war-torn Sago, where death surely awaits. In a midnight blizzard, she escapes them, running into a deep enchanted forest and the great and terrible beast who will bargain for her life. But, but can beauty accept the beast? So it's a bit more of a, a classic um, retelling of the story. I just found it a little bit disjointed and a little bit... Um, I was enjoying the beginning bit of it, but then it just sort of seemed to get a little bit ridiculous. And so, I, 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 nah. it was only okay, but I didn't love it. But I did actually finish it. And then the final one that we read is Birth on the Wind by Zoe Marriott and I think this is number two in a series of books and this was sent as an art copy from Walker Books but it's taken me that long to finish it because of my slump then it's probably out now. Although this is book two in a series I didn't you didn't have to read the, the beginning one. Um, so this one um, I quite enjoyed actually. So it says everyone in Hannah's remote village knows that straying too far into the wood means certain death 
Hannah, still grieving the loss of her brother to the beast, knows it better than most. When her father is taken too, she gathers her hunting gear and goes in search of the monster, determined to destroy it or be destroyed herself. But the forest contains more secrets, more magic and more darkness than Hannah could ever have imagined. And the beast is not at all what she expects. And this is sort of like a japanese -y kind of feel to it. It's very much an enchanted tale, very much focuses on evil spirits and spells, being in control of your own destiny and grief and revenge. So I did enjoy it. Um, it wasn't marvellous but it was okay. Um, but it was a, a good sort of twist on the Beauty and the Beast tale. So that was my wrap up for the next chunk. We're taking a little hiatus from the fairy tales for a little bit but we've got two more to go and we'll probably get to them at some point soon and do the wrap up and they're going to be Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. Couldn't think what the other one was. So let me know if you've read any of these and what you think of them. Keep reading, I'll see you all soon. Bye!